We've been looking at Jonathan for a while, is what owner Michael Bidwell said after the hiring of Jonathan Gannon as the new Arizona Cardinals head coach became official. And yes, it did take a while for the announcement. Welcome, Bird Gang, Craig Riolu and Paul Calvisi here at the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center, where momentarily we will hear from the new Arizona Cardinals head coach, Jonathan Gannon, first year head coach, Paul Never been in this position before the previous two seasons as the Eagles defensive coordinator. But what do we want to hear here from Coach Gannon? You know, I, I don't want to hear any more about the when because it's all about the who. doesn't matter when you hired your head coach. It's who is the head coach. What can he do for your organization? And we begin to get a glimpse into that effective today. And I think one thing we'll be able to tell right away is just that it factor that so many people talk about with career leadership DNA. Uh, I think we're going to find out right away just how omnipresent that is in the room and how he commands that room. I, I you know there's a lot of great questions for everybody involved. You know, the decision makers, Monty Ossipport, Michael Bidwell. How did you weigh a first-time head coach versus head coaching experience? Factors, the deciding factors in hiring Jonathan Gannon and so radar for a while and so you get a little glimpse into that and you realize why they're waiting till after the Super Bowl and we will also hear from owner Michael Bidwell and general manager Monty Austin Ford they will be on stage as well with Jonathan Gannon and of course I'm sure outside of the leadership aspect it's what are you going to do to get Kyler Murray to get to that MVP level once again staff questions especially the offense coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Yeah, those are big questions. Who's going to run the offense? What, do you have some names in mind? Can you share some names? What are you looking for? Are you going to call the defense yourself? You know, there, there's some big questions. Uh, and 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 what exactly are your thoughts on the roster? Now he has that scouting background. Yes, for three plus years he was a scout in the league. How does that serve you as a head coach? Monty Ossenford has cited that. In fact, Gannon cited that in some of the interviews that a lot of GMs love that. And we know how Monty Ossipport said in his introductory press conference, there's no relationship more important in an NFL organization than GM and head coach. You need to have that complete organizational alignment is what he called it. And with that scouting background, I'm guessing that, you know, it just it proves, I think, to be a factor in his hiring. And it bodes well that they'll be in sync on a lot of these decisions. First time general manager, first time head coach. But you want that synergy between front office and coaching staff. We've already kind of gotten a little bit of a glimpse of Coach Gannon. One, that message to the Bird Gang after the initial hiring. And then earlier this morning as he walked into the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center, the inner that he just has the excitement that he has for this opportunity but as he mentioned he had a microphone but he said you know what I speak so loudly perhaps I might not need this microphone that I'm expecting to hear and see yeah, this afternoon. and we were front and center for that and I was standing next to a few uh, staffers from the business side and, and a couple of them joked they were ready to run onto the practice field and hit the blocking sled okay so he is a high energy guy it is infectious I mean first impressions yeah, that's not going to be a problem. He's going to bring that sort of energy. And I think the question is, does he bring the accountability? We know Michael Bidwell cited that in making these moves, in cleaning house, GM and head coach, going outside the organization for both hires. And we also know that when Shane Steichen met with the media in Indianapolis, the Eagles offensive coordinator, somebody asked him, what did you learn from Nick Sirianni? Because Nick Sirianni was a first-time head coach. And look what he did in two years with the Eagles. Both Shane Steichen and Jonathan Gannon had a front-row seat for that. And the answer was how he instilled accountability from the beginning. And so if you're wondering, okay, what was one of the selling points for Jonathan Gannon? If you're looking for accountability, he's coming from that sort of DNA in Philadelphia. That's what they did to turn around an Eagles team that was a four-win team before Sirianni came out of nowhere, took that over, and obviously he made a lot of great personnel moves, and it's always about the players. But I like the fact that Jonathan Gannon was right there involved on the front lines of turning around that Eagles team and what they did for the culture in their building. And that's got to come right away. Day one, whether it's with his staff or with his players, how many of the current Cardinals coaches are retained? How many players are 
whether in attendance or get that first face-to-face with the new head coach because it starts now. It's got to be immediate as far as where you set that bar, if you will, in terms of accountability. Yeah, what kind of training camp is Jonathan Gannon going to run? We've heard both Buda Baker and Isaiah Simmons say that maybe last year's issues started in training camp. I I think the approach last year was, all right, let's make sure we're healthy in November, December, and January. Obviously, that backfired. you got to be regular season ready. So what does that mean? How much of that can you instill in the offseason and OTAs and mini camps and training camp practices? What exactly is that going to look like? So we're all curious to hear all these answers to all sorts of different questions. But, yeah, he's got to start with the staff, to your point, the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator. Hired on Tuesday, we hear from the new head coach today. Thank you all for being here. This is a great day. I want to give out a few uh, special thanks and also um, sort of put everything in perspective. I think everybody knows who's an NFL fan that every year there's a team or two or three or four sometimes that have to, at the end of a season, begin a search for a general manager and a head coach. But I believe in the history of the NFL, never before has a team had to do a search for a general manager, a head coach. Angelo's going to leave. He'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, Had to do a search for a head coach, a general manager, and host a Super Bowl all just a few weeks later. So I want to thank everybody on our team that was able to fill the gaps while I was away on the search. Uh, We have a great team here of individuals. Many of you are in the room. Some of you are out at the stadium uh, and other places. uh, And we were able to pull off a tremendous Super Bowl hire a great general manager and a great head coach. I especially want to thank Lisa Manning, Sean Mayo, and Mark Dalton, who were by my side throughout the interview process as we hired Monty Ossenfort as our general manager and Jonathan Gannon as our head coach. So I'd like to now turn it over to Monty to talk a little bit about head coach Jonathan Gannon and talk a little bit about why we selected him. Thank you, Michael. Uh, It's an exciting day for us, everyone here at the Arizona Cardinals. This is a a process that has, uh, we we casted a wide net on this process. It was an inclusive process. Uh, We talked to a lot of great individuals. We talked to over 10 candidates, uh, some of them multiple times. And it was a great learning experience for myself personally and all of us on the uh, executive management team. Um, We learned a lot. We learned a lot about our organization, we learned a lot about other organizations. And that was our goal. Our goal was to find out, to, to find out the vision and find a, a match pairing for, for what we envisioned and for uh, what a potential head coach would envision. And it was, it was an experience for me where last year I, I had an opportunity for, to interview for a couple GM jobs. And when I went into those jobs and they would ask me who I wanted to talk to for potential head coach openings. And I would have my list of names, and, but I, I, I sat across the desk and I, and I would think, man, I, here's a person I'm presenting that I, I think would be a good head coach, but there was a lot of times where I, it was just a name and I had not talked to people and I had not had conversations with those people. And so it was important for me last, last summer as part of a, um, a professional development uh, process that I went through that I, I wanted to reach out and start talking to head co- potential head coaches. And, it, you know, I've been, been in the league for a little, around, a little north of 20 years, and you form relationships and, and people suggest, hey, you know, I think you should talk to this guy or people recommend. Uh, you hear great things. And, and, and I, I was able to do that. And I had a lot of great conversations. I talked to a lot of potential head coaches, and one of them was Jonathan. That was the first time I had talked to him. And I also talked to multiple other coaches, that, that some that we had a chance to interview and some that we didn't. But it was a great learning experience for me. And it was one that, that really helped me uh, as I embarked on this process here over the last five, five weeks. Ultimately, our process led us to Jonathan. Jonathan's energy, when he entered, entered our room, it was nonstop from the beginning. All the more impressive uh, coming off, off the Super Bowl just hours before he stepped into our room. Um, Jonathan's vision for our organization matched up well with the vision that we envision or that we envision for our for the Cardinals organization. Um, his reputation as a leader, uh, his ability to connect to players, to staff, to the rest of his coaches, 
um, his ability to work with a personnel department and provide a vision for the type of players that we're gonna go out and seek. Um, it was apparent that Jonathan shared a lot of the same values that I value and that Michael values. So I am extremely excited today to be in front of you and I have the honor of introducing Jonathan Gannon as the next head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Wow, Red Sea. Uh, obviously, just want to start by thanking Michael and Monty for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, there's one of 32 of these, and uh, they don't come by very often. Uh, going through the interview process, it was very clear and easy to see that my vision for how to run a team aligned uh, explicitly with Michael and Monty. So i um, very excited to get to work, and I thank you both for having me in and uh, giving me the opportunity. I'd like to thank my family, Gina, Rocco, Lola, and our little guy just went out of here, Angelo. But, um, you know, without my wife, I would not be able to do what I do to be successful and dive all in and the commitment that that takes. And uh, she holds the fort down, so I love you and I appreciate you. I'd like to thank my parents, Jim and Janice Gannon. Uh, my father is no longer living, but taught from a very young age, it's not about you, it's about the team. And that if you're going to do something, you got to go all in and give 100%. So uh, a lot of values that I hold with me very dearly were passed down from my parents. Um, obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles organization, it's first class, just like this one is. Mr. Lurie, Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni. Uh, really learned a lot my two years with Philadelphia and the vision that they had for that team, bringing me in and teaching me those things. I'll forever be grateful. And this was the Philadelphia Eagles. I said I learned a lot of, I learned a lot from a lot of different coaches that I was with. And um, you know, I try to pick everyone's brain, but the Philadelphia Eagles j springboard me to, to get in this seat, and I will forever be grateful. And I love those people there. Um, and with that, all the coaches that I've worked under that have helped me along the way. I've had some really good mentors, too many to list right now, uh, some in the NFL, some in college, some in high school. My uh, head football coach is saying Ignatius uh, just retired, Coach Kyle, but uh, he wrote a book called The Object of the Game, and I think it's a manual that you can take anywhere and uh, get a team running the right way. So uh, look forward to working with the players. That was very appealing to me, some of the guys that we have on board right now. Not too many times do you take over a, a team and you have a franchise quarterback. So that was very appealing. And I'll head some of this stuff off right now as we talk before we get to questions and things like that. But just know this, we're going to be very adaptable. This is, I'm talking the Arizona Cardinals. This is what our team's going to be. We're going to be adaptable. We're going to be violent. We're going to be explosive. And we're going to be smart. And all three phases go into that. And we will maximize the talents of the players that we have. And that's how we're going to win games. And don't get it twisted. We're going to win games. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. McMahon, I'm an Arizona Republic. Talk about what do you mean by adaptable? I get the other th three things, but what, what, is, what is adaptable in your system? Yeah, good question, Bob. It's everything to me. The game continually changes and adapts, and the game in 2023 is not going to look like it was this year. And that's because coaches are smart. So um, I famously set a line back in when I first took over as a defensive coordinator of Philly that I don't have a scheme. And people were very uncomfortable with that. And I was not because I don't believe in a scheme. I believe in putting the players that we have in positions to be successful. So we're going to look different week to week, predicated on who we have playing and who we are playing. And um, I think that you have to be ever evolving and adaptable and have a growth mindset to stay ahead of the curve or you will get beat. So uh, that's what I mean by adaptable. Good question. 
Hey, how's it going? Tyler Drake with Arizona Sports. Congratulations on the uh, new job. Uh, I just wanted to get your take on why do you feel like you're the right fit to turn this thing around? And for Michael and Monty, what really led you to be, hey, this is our guy? Well, I'll, I'll take it real quick. I, I think he came in with a vision and plan that the, the vision aligned with where we want to be about getting back to the top of the NFC West and competing in January and competing to get to the Super Bowl and win it. So that's number one, the vision. His plan he outlined, some of which he'll get in today, some of which we're not going to get into, uh, but I'm excited about it. It's the view that he had of our elite quarterback and getting him back to being the playmaker that he is and making sure we build around him and put our players in positions, uh, especially Kyler as our quarterback, uh, to really get after it. And I was excited about what his plan is and, and how he outlined it. And really, uh, uh, to echo what Michael said, it's a, a vision that, that we all share for the entire football organization. The alignment, the, uh, the shared idea of what it takes and to put our players in the best possible position to win. And that includes a wide variety of, of different departments in, in the football operations department. I would say I'm the guy for the job. That's what I would say. Um, you know, just talking with Michael and Monty, uh, very excited to get started, but just what they just said, our, our vision of how we want to run the football team. Uh, I would say that any job I've ever taken, there's a little light, any job I've ever taken, there's always a big time challenge ahead of you. And I've succeeded in all of those, starting from the ground floor of the business all the way up until this seat. So what I don't know about the job, I'll figure out fast and I'll lean on the people that I can, that I can trust and lean on. And uh, we're going to get it rolling. Coach over here, um, Richard Sines, Fox 10. Welcome to the Valley. Um, you, you kind of talked about starting from the ground floor of your career. You, you have a scouting background as well as Monty did. Do you, did. Did that help in your connection during the interview process? And did it help when you were evaluating the, the talent on this particular roster? For example, Kyler Murray. Absolutely. John Mancini sitting back there taught me how to scout back in the day with the St. Louis Rams. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, it, I did, I was on the personnel side for three years and uh, it gave me a different view of the game. Now, ultimately, I love working with the players and the schematics of the game. That's why I wanted to get back into coaching. But it gave me a bird's eye view of how that operation runs, why, why the personnel side and the scouts that are, you know, going on school calls are so vital to a team's success uh, because I did that. And um, yeah, as you, I, I feel like I learned how to evaluate players as I was going through that process. So I was a college scout for two years and a pro scout for one. And um, you know, know the league better than anyone else. That was what I got. That was my job recognition or my job description of when I was a pro scout. So uh, when you do that, you have a very specific vision of what you want in a player as it relates to the scheme. And then you, you have a very specific vision of the makeup of the players that you want, which that's, you know, I know Monty and, and Michael have heard me say this multiple times. Everything, everybody that we bring in here or that is here or that will be a Cardinal will have elite football character because you will not hit your ceiling if you don't have that. And what I mean by that is, is you have to be team first. And that's how we're going to build this team. Hey, Jonathan. I'm Josh Weinfuss with ESPN. Hi, um, Josh. What have the last four or five days been like for you, just between the Super Bowl, interviews, going back and forth? And my second question is, will you call the defense? Josh, I'll answer the, the second one first. Um, not sure on that yet. Uh, it's, that's going to depending. That's going to depend a little bit of the makeup of the staff. Um, you know, I got a really good blueprint in Philly of – how that went with the head coach and how he adapted to make our team better. Um, so I'll, I'll figure that out as we come. Uh, the last four or five days have been very normal for me. You know, you got to adapt as things come at your, at your door. And uh, they've been exciting. Um, obviously, I have a lot of energy and, and emotion that went into the game and then losing that game and then uh, staying the night here, not knowing I was going to stay the night and interview for a head coaching job. But uh, you take everything in stride and you do the best that you can. And uh, I'll say that it was a fun 48 hours. I'll say that because uh, I enjoyed myself.
Dr. Cameron Cox, 12 News. Welcome to the Valley, Coach. Can you take us through the meeting with Michael and Monty? I mean, it had to be tough to flip the page from the Super Bowl, but they both mentioned your energy. What did you say in that meeting to get this job? Yeah, Cameron, you can ask them what I said to get the job. But I would say this, um, I, you'll hear me say a lot of times, and I tell our players this all the time, and I, and I do believe you have to, you can't just tell players one thing and not live it yourself. I believe in being where your feet are. And I don't live in the past. I don't live in the future. I live in the present. So uh, compartmentalizing on Monday morning to get up and talk to Michael and Monty, uh, that's what I did. And uh, I obviously had prepped for that uh, opportunity for a long time. And uh, basically, I did not have a book. I didn't have a piece of paper. I had one note card. I showed Michael my call sheet from the Super Bowl and said, this is how I do things. I write it by hand. And uh, ultimately, we talked about what was in my brain and what was in my heart and um, led me to this seat right now. Jonathan, uh, Darren Urban from azcardinals.com. Uh, a lot of people are wondering what you're going to do at offensive coordinator and who the day-to-day -day guys are they're going to be coaching Kyler. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that and kind of what your philosophy is for that. Yeah, that's step one. We're, we're starting to look at some different candidates and uh, looking at interviewing some people here in the next 48 hours. And, uh, but I have a very specific vision of how I want to play on offense. And the person that comes in here to run the offense is going to understand that everything that we do will be structured around the quarterback position to maximize his skill set. And we have an elite one. We also have some elite players at different positions already on the roster that I'm very excited to work with. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So, But uh, just as an overall general philosophy of being adaptable, uh, we're going to maximize Kyler's skill set. We're going to be adaptable. We're going to generate explosives. We're going to protect the football and be situationally smart. And we know that when you hear me talk about explosives and takeaways, we know those are winning stats. And that's all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. That's what we will preach, and that's what we're going to practice, and that's what the players will be educated on, and that's how we're going to play. And um, so if you do those things, you'll be in the playoffs. Jonathan, uh, Nick King from 3TV CBS 5, welcome. You mentioned you've been preparing for this type of, for a head coach interview. When, when did you start thinking that you wanted to be a head coach, and when did you believe that you were ready? Yeah, Nick. So I dislocated and broke my hip when I was 19 years old in college and tried to play the following year, couldn't play, and started coaching right away. And that's when I realized I wanted to be a head coach. So probably 21 years old. Um, and preparing to be a head coach is not hard if you have a growth mindset and you listen to people. And what I mean by that is, is I was around a lot of really good guys as I went through the business of, you know, whatever, 15, 16, 17 years. And each person was a little bit different with how they did things. Uh, but the blueprint was laid out for me. And I really would want to say I've had a lot of great mentors and a lot of great coaches that I've been around. Nick Sirianni for the last two years really prepped me to be a head coach. I truly believe that. I told him before I walked out of the building. And... Um, you know, we're obviously friends because we work together in Indy, but he was my boss in Philly for two years, and he was extremely hard on me, extremely detailed, detail, he's detail-oriented, uh, but he always had my back. And he let me in on a lot of things of how he was running the team and the why behind it, but he gave me a very uh, easy blueprint, which I will put my spin on, but he gave me the blueprint to how to be a head coach. And that's when, for these last two years, especially this last year, I was fully confident that I could that I could do this job, so uh, I appreciate him for that. Hey, Jonathan, David Brandt from the Associated Press. Because of your background in in scouting and everything, and, and just the way you're talking, what do you think about this roster? Is is this a rebuild, or do you think this is a playoff team immediately? Just where do you think this team is at, just kind of structure wise? Yeah, good question. I'm I'm never going to put a ceiling or a floor on any, any roster, any player that, were, that, that is under my watch. So uh, I know that there is work to be done, but I like the core pieces here. And uh, we're going to, with through Monty and I and Michael, we're going to turn over every stone that we can to help improve the roster. And uh, a funny little story, we were in the interview on Monday, and 
Monty asked me a question, and I asked him the question right back. Well, what do you think about that, Monty? He says, well, I want to hear what you say first. And, and I told him, and uh, he disagreed a little bit. And I said, well, I understand your point, but here's my point. And uh, I think that we're going to have a really good relationship as far as we're both. Here's where we did not disagree on, is we're going to do everything that we can to put the best people out there to win games. And there's different ways to do that. And we will explore all those options, but that's what we're going to do. So um, to summarize that is I'm excited about the people that we have here, and I'm excited about how who we need to add. Tyler Dragon, USA Today. Congratulations. Um, have you had time to review the tape from the Super Bowl, and how has that experience prepared you to be a head coach? Yeah, Sunday night I did in my hotel room, which was hard because uh, you feel for the players when you get to that game. Um, you know, I don't feel sorry for myself. I feel, I feel bad about the players and not getting Mr. Lurie another ring and Howie another ring and Nick his first ring. So everything that I do, that's, that's what be where your feet are. I'm always trying to learn from experiences that happen right in real time. And uh, that's what I did. So um, I feel bad about not being able to get that done, but it was an excellent learning experience for me. And I know that I learned a lot from that game and um, things that I would need to do different moving forward to win that game. Good question. Welcome to town. <clears throat> Thank Greg you. Moore, Arizona Republic. Good to see you, man. Monty, good to see you. Michael, good to see you. I've noticed there's a lot of players here, and I'm curious what you, what does that mean to you to see the support from these guys? And you know, I really wanted to know what was maybe one of the hardest things that you ever had to overcome and that you could talk about how you overcame that and then relay that to other people who maybe haven't gotten the right opportunity or haven't had the chance that they've deserved to keep them pushing to make sure that they don't give up because that's all about football, right? Good question, Greg. Loaded question, so let me see if I can hit all of that. Um, yeah, really good question. Uh, it means a lot to me that the players are here, and I've connected with a lot of these guys already, but, you know, you're going to hear me say a lot. The players, you know, just because of the seat I'm in, they have to understand and know that you care about them as people first before players. And you'll hear me say servant leadership a lot. Uh, Michael and I connected on servant leadership because we're both Jesuit educated, but I truly believe that. And... That's what we're here to do. Everybody, I, I, I had a welcome. We had a welcome party this morning. And everybody in this building, no matter what job they do for the Cardinals, whether you're the offensive coordinator, the ticket sales manager, the marketing director, you have a specific role to serve the players that we have for us. And everyone has to be on board with that because the player's job is to maximize themselves. And it's our job to get them to maximize themselves and hit their ceiling. So, um, the, the second part of that question, I would say, you know, it was, I, I go back to it because it was a long time ago, 20 years ago now or 21 years ago, but uh, my playing career was kind of taken away from me with an injury. And it was, uh, and I was only 19, I was only in college, so it's a lot of bit, it's a lot different than pro guys, you know, but um, it was something that I had to come to terms with and realize the goals that I set out for myself were not going to happen. And I had to switch paths so, and find something that I was passionate about that I could do and try to hit some new goals. And uh, so I would say that, you know, you got to have faith that everything happens for a reason. And I, d I do believe that. And the seat that I'm in today, that there's the people that have helped me to be in the seat that I'm in right now. But ultimately, you got to make your own mind up and have sustained positive attitude that I'm going to get whatever I need to do in my heart and in my br mind uh, to get done. And ultimately, if it is to be, it's up to me. And that's the attitude that I like for our players to have as well. Michael, there was a lot said about this job search throughout this entire time. I just think it's fair to give you a chance to defend your team. What did you hear from candidates about the job and, and feedback that you got about this organization? And then, Jonathan, what was your perception? And then when you got here, did it match that or was it something different? Well, there was a lot of noise out there. there. There tends to be a lot of it was inaccurate. I think a lot of people came in and uh, uh, liked our facility. In fact, Jonathan and the Eagles got a chance to, to be here last week and use the facilities. 
Um, we, you know, we talked a lot about areas of improvement that <coughs> were just not uh, football, but also football operations, if you will, about areas where we could we could be uh, improving things. We're very open about that. Um, and then, you know, the, the whole idea of, you know, I, I really focused on leadership and accountability, and I think that's what we've got with Jonathan Gannon. JG, and you're going to see it. He's pretty subdued right now. I'm, I'm totally surprised that, uh, but I think you're going to see that um, uh, come out. Uh, but in any case, uh, he, he's going to bring a lot of leadership and accountability to this. He's got a great plan. You've already heard some of the phrases he's, he's talked about, team first. Um, you know, if it's going to be, it's up to you to make it. Uh, so if it's going to be, it's up to me. That's right. uh, and so, um, and he's got a few other ones that he's, he's saving for, I think, the end of the press conference. But, um, uh, let it rip. That's one. Buckle rip. up. That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's, he, uh, rip is a verb that he used in about 12 different ways, I think, during the interview. And we started to understand these JG-isms uh, by the end of the interview process. But uh, he is, uh, so uh, I, I think for me, um, the people coming, you know, I'm, I'm from the show me state. And when people came here and saw, they realized what misperceptions were out there and what the, the real thing is. And that's what people saw. Uh, you know, people were excited about this job. We had a lot more interest in, than the 10 candidates that we interviewed. I can tell you that. And that was hard because there's some really great folks out there, but you can't interview everybody. So leaning on Monty, we looked at, at, at sort of narrowing uh, the pipeline and, um, and we had some great finalists and um, but I think the the right decision was Jonathan Gannon. I'm excited. Give me. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, very easy for me. One, I don't I don't care about people's opinions. I really don't. Besides the people that are I'm working with and the players, uh, so I don't hear any outside noise. I don't pay attention to it because uh, if if you do that then you're not really being where your feet are. You're letting other people's opinions drive your own feelings and emotions, so I don't do that. Um, so when I came in here and interviewed, I had a very open mind, and I, I used the interview to uh, explain my vision and really wanted to see if my vision for running a team matched up with Michael's and Monty's, and it did. And it, it became very clear and evident before we even uh, before I was supposed to fly back where I said I want to stay for dinner and we ended I ended up staying for dinner that uh, I wanted this job and um, And I'm glad we got to make it happen. So uh, That's probably my answer to the part of your question Hey, Jonathan, welcome to Valley Bo Brock PHNX sports. You're welcome. clearly a big believer in Kyler Did you have any questions before you took this job? Who did you ask and what did you find out? Yeah, I did. I obviously did research on this job. The timing of it was uh, a little uh, different, I would say, because I didn't know that I was going to interview for this job until uh, after we got done playing. But um, I talked to the, you know, the NFL is a small world, and you can talk to a couple people that you trust. Everyone has those people in their corner, and uh, you hear their opinions about things and, and maybe negatives or positives about that. But uh, everything that I heard, the research that I did coming here about the players or the people that I was going to be working for was all positive. And uh, ultimately, though, when I got in the room on Monday and then Tuesday, I'm going to trust my gut. And uh, my gut said, get this job and take this job. And that's what I did. Jonathan, um, you mentioned earlier about the you know, kind of living in the moment for these last few days. I'm, I'm curious, what, you were mentioning the fact, or somebody mentioned the fact that you got a chance to spend a week here last week, yeah. and now it's where you're going to work. And then even going further back, you were kind of famously quoted by a TV station in Philadelphia telling them after the NFC Championship game, you weren't going to be going anywhere, and now all of a sudden you find yourself here. I'm just wondering, you're, you're just your mindset over these last couple weeks with everything that's happened. Yeah, good question about when I made that comment, I wasn't going anywhere because um, Houston went another direction. That's who I interviewed for. And I, I knew that they were going another direction. And that was the only interview that I had for this, this cycle. So, um, you know, I was obviously fully engaged in the playoff run that we had, then to the Super Bowl. And then, like I said, how he approached me on, uh, on Sunday night after the game and said, hey, you're going to stay here, you're not flying back with us. You're going to interview for this, for this job. And uh, that's when I clicked that mindset in. 
and uh, said, okay, well, let me s probably, you know, stop, uh, got to pick up my bootstraps a little bit because I was down, obviously, about the game. And, um, you know, take a shower, work out, and come in and, and you know, shoot your gun. So that's what I did. Just, I, I want to jump in here because I think it speaks to his adaptability, um, but uh, also throughout the process, because of where we were in the hiring process, on the date that we hired Monty, the window had sort of closed. And what we didn't want to do is be a distraction to some of the coaches who, as they were eliminated, we put in um, uh, uh, permission uh, request forms. And so, so we, we did that with other candidates and we did that with Jonathan. So we didn't want to be a distraction to any one of the coaches, including Jonathan in the biggest game that there is. Jonathan, Jody Ayler with Fox Sports 910 here in Phoenix. I'm curious your thoughts on player accountability and how important it is to building a winner and what you have found to be the most successful ways to get that player accountability in the locker room. Yeah, uh, probably you guys don't have the time for me to answer that question, everything that, uh, <laughs> that, I'm gonna, that we're going to do here. But uh, player accountability is, is simply this. You've got to define what winning behavior is and hold people to that standard. It's as easy as that. It's your daily actions with what you're doing on a daily basis to improve yourself as a player and as a team. And accountability is just not a negative. It's a positive, too. So when people do the right thing, that shows that's winning behavior. And, and you're going to see that our guys, we're going to love them up as, as hard as we're going to be on our guys. We're going to love them up even more. And that, that's, that's how you win games. But I think that ultimately, we're going to show them the way that we want things done. And the players sitting here right now are going to take it over because the ultimate accountability comes from not wanting to let your teammate down with how you're doing, going about your business. So um, that's, uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways to get that done. And I look forward to doing that with our guys. And uh, that'll be one of the major things that, that we hold our hat on. Uh, Monty Nick King from 3TV CBS 5. You mentioned talking to Jonathan last summer. When you got this job, how much was he in the front of your mind and what stood out about the conversation last summer with him? Yeah, so really last, last summer was all about just having a conversation, uh, reaching out and, and talking football and talking different ideas about you know, if, uh, if, if you were a head coach or I was a general manager and, and how do those things work and how what, what's your vision for how a program for, would run and what's mine? And, and that's really what I did with, with multiple people, not just Jonathan. Um, and so then when I got this job, um, Jonathan was one of the people that I, when I first sat down with Michael and Mark and Lisa and Sean, uh, Jonathan's name was, was one of many that I wanted to, I wanted to talk to. And uh, the rest of the committee had names that, uh, that they wanted to talk to. And so we sat down and we all put those names together and we came up with a, the group of, of 10 people that we eventually talked to. Um, and so, you know, the, certain, the rules that, that the NFL has, I understand why they're there, but they, they, prevent, or they present challenges too, and timing. And um, so, you know, yeah, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad it worked out the way it is. We got the guy that is the right person for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, and just, you know, we had to, had to jump through some hoops of the timing to, um, to talk to not just Jonathan, but other candidates as well. Coach, um, Richard Sines here. Um, I'm not an NFL scout, even though I've always wanted to be, but the early scouting report on you is high energy. That's what I hear is high energy. Could you just take us through the roller coaster of emotions you've kind of touched on where, you know, one moment you don't get the Houston job, then the next thing you know, you're in the game of your life, locked in for that, don't win that game. The next thing you know, you know you're interviewing for the dream job that you eventually get. How do you keep that energy going through the ebbs and flows of what you just went through? And could that be a lesson in life and even in this game where next play mentality, you know, not every play is going to game or game's going to go your way and so on. Yeah, it is. Uh, in Philly, we use the term dog mentality, and that basically is what I mean by be where your feet are. It's next play. It doesn't matter if you had a good play uh, in the first quarter, if you had a bad play in the first quarter, that you got to move on and all you need to be locked in is, is on the next play. And it's the same for coaches. And as, as much energy and passion as I have for what I do, um, there is a, a point where, and I tell our players this all the time, is you have to be emotionally stable. Because as high as the highs, if you ride the highs, you're going to ride the lows. And you really want to be somewhere in there. 
Um, but we are going to be energetic here. We're going to be passionate about what they do, what we do. And, uh, you know, I don't, I've never worked a day in my life since I started in football because it, it's fun to me. It's what I enjoy. It's what I love. I don't think of it as a job. So, uh, you know, having energy and passion to come in and, and interview and talk about, you know, doing this or when it gets to week three in training camp when everyone's maybe a little bit tired and a little bit hot, I, you know, I don't really pay attention to those external factors. I'm, I'm committed on doing my job the best that I can with a lot of energy and enthusiasm about it. So um, just really looking forward to getting with the players, man, because that's what this job's all about. And that's, that's the, the secret sauce of these things are the players. Jonathan, over here again. Uh, your opinions and thoughts about Kyler, the quarterback, and the talent that's there, and then how also – what's on the option or on the table for how you navigate the off season and the start of the season if he's not ready by week one, two, or three? Yeah, so obviously played against Kyler this year, and uh, it was a unique game plan to put together because of his skill set. And, um, you know, I, I use the term, uh, he's a problem to defend uh, because what he can do. He's a legit problem for defenses. And, um, you know, he has a very unique skill set. And uh, that's what I'm looking forward to, working with him and showing him, hey, this is how defenses are going to try to stop you. Here's what you need to be ready for. And these are the things that we're going to do with him that's going to help him move all the way up and down the field and score a bunch of points and be explosive and protect the football. So uh, with the off season, we'll put together a plan. I like some people that are here already. But just like I said with Monty, when we disagreed about something in the interview, we did not disagree on is we're going to do everything that we can to put the best product on the field. And how the, all the ways that you can do that, all the different times in the year that you can do that with free agency, with draft, with signing free agents, with during training camp, uh, with practice squad, week one to week three looks a little bit different. We're going to turn over all those stones because that's, that's the main goal is, is put the best thing that we can out on the field. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, welcome, Coach uh, Jose Romero, Arizona Republic. Congratulations to you and your family. Um, at what point in your career would you say that the, the NFL was a, something that you could reach, uh, you could become a, a head coach? Was there a mentality there in, as you went through your career that said, you know, I could get to this level? Yeah, when I was 24, my first job in the NFL as a defensive quality control coach for the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, Bobby Petrino was the head coach, gave me the opportunity. Mike Zimmer was the defensive coordinator at the time. Emmett Thomas was the DB coach at the time. And, um, you know, I, I always think, like, you, you never want to limit yourself with what you want to do. As, a, as it doesn't matter what you're doing in your life. Like if you put in your own mind a limit on what you want to do, well, you're probably not going to, you're probably going to get limited. And um, I said right from the start, um, you know, there's a lot of short-term things that you have to do uh, to get to long-term goals. But, you know, well, I want to be a head coach in the NFL. Well, let's, let's worry about uh, learning DB play first. And uh, that's what I did. So that was always a goal of mine, but it was in the back of my mind because I do believe is you got to be where your feet are. And to, to get to be a head coach is I, bet to, I better learn how to do this job first. And that's what I did with every job as I moved up through the ranks. So, uh, you know, like I said, I've been, I've been very fortunate and blessed to be around great people that really um, were thoughtful to give their knowledge to me. And I, you know, if you have a growth mindset and you're curious about learning and you're around the right people, you can, you can get better real fast. Jonathan, you're a former safety yourself, really talented group here in the Valley, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, Isaiah Simmons. What are your thoughts on the group and how do you envision utilizing someone with the skill set like Isaiah? All different ways. I talked to all those guys um, in the last 24 hours and, and just like some other people that we have on this roster, Zach, Kyler, James, uh, we're going to use guys' skill sets to present matchup problems. That's adaptability. Um, when I talk about adaptability, I'm talking about our people in mind first and then who we're playing. And it's a little bit of a chess match with schematics of how you need to do that, all while keeping it simple for your guys so we can go out and play fast and be violent. 
but um, you know we're we're going to maximize those guys and use them in ways that give us a, the best chance to win. Craig, we're going to make this the last one. Jonathan Craig Fui, ABC 15 here locally. You were a multi-sport athlete in high school, had a lot of success in different sports, like a lot of these guys. Why football for you? Nothing compares to a football game in the world. Uh, maybe seeing your babies born, but that's about it. Um, so, <laughs> I, I, I mean, there's nothing like running out of the tunnel. There's really not. You guys know that. I mean, there's not too many things you can do in this world that gets your uh, emotions and adrenaline pumping like a football game does. And then when you work back from that, the process that needs to take place the daily routine that needs to take place to give yourself a chance to have success to win a game is just awesome. And you got to really fall in love with the process. And you'll hear me talk about, and these players are going to hear me talk about, you know, when you start to be results oriented, you're, you're not going to win. You have to be process driven. And it's what you do on a daily basis that gets the results that you want. And um, so that's what I would say. I, I first fell in love with basketball. My coaches made me run track to become a better football player. I don't know if I enjoyed track, um, but uh, I did love playing hoops. But nothing compares to a football game. And hopefully you guys have seen that uh, the genuineness of I do believe it's about the team first. It's the ultimate team game. And uh, that's why I love being a football coach. Thank you. An almost 40-minute press conference with new Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon alongside owner Michael Bidwell and general manager Monty Ford, as we bring you back here inside the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center. Craig Riolu and Paul Calvisi, who was in that press conference, in addition to a number of Cardinals players, which I think is important to point out. But first things first, Paul, your initial impression. You know, as a first-time head coach, he most definitely commanded the room, did he not? We've seen a lot, a lot of first-time head coach opening press conferences, and he didn't appear to be nervous in the least at all. The confidence, the quiet confidence, and at times vocal confidence, you, you can just sense. And when they say he has that it factor and that natural charisma and that leadership DNA, you see it. I mean, you see it on the screen right now, just him taking command of this photo opportunity. So <laughs> there's no doubt who's in charge. It's Jonathan Gannon. And there's so many different areas, obviously, we can revisit so many answers to so many different questions that I think everybody got on the edge of their seat. And it's just, it is truly infectious. And I was standing to a bunch of, next to a bunch of the players. I couldn't even get to my, my pre-assigned, the seat I saved, I couldn't even get to. The auditorium was so loaded with people. And um, you could, s just the players next to me, how many times they nodded. And, uh, you know, they weren't on camera. Those were natural reactions. So I think he's already getting buy-in uh, 40 minutes into his first day on the job. Among the players in attendance, and if I'm missing anyone, Paul, feel free to step in. But according to our colleague, Darren Urban, Kyler Murray in attendance, DJ Humphreys, Zach Ertz, Will Hernandez, James Conner, Rondell Moore, Antoine Wesley, Colt McCoy, just to name a few. And Byron were, Murphy was Byron there. Murphy, which yeah. is good because he's <laughs> scheduled to be an unrestricted yeah. free agent come March. But when we first came on board here, it was, all right, what do we want to find out? What do we want to know? And obviously it was, can he command the room? We all heard that. He can command the room. That energy and passion comes through, whether you're watching it or you're hearing it. And then how does he get Kyler Murray to become Kyler Murray? And there are a number of options as far as offensive coordinator. But he spoke very highly of Kyler watching him and then prepping for him going back to the regular season when the Eagles came to State Farm Stadium the first time. 
Yeah, he has firsthand knowledge of trying to defend Kyler Murray. Called him, quote, a legit problem for defenses. So he has, and that is true. Look, we've talked about this, Craig. When Kyler Murray's at his best, the defensive coordinator gets very little sleep that game week. That's what Kyler Murray can do to opposing defensive coordinators. Jonathan Gannon has been there and done that. Cardinals lost in the fourth quarter to an Eagles team. They ended up winning the NFC, was dominant almost all season. So he knows what Kyler is capable of. And it was interesting to hear that even though he's a defensive head coach, that he has, quote, a specific blueprint for what he wants to do on offense. And it sounds like he's going to reverse engineer it. He's going to find the offensive coordinator that shares his vision as opposing as opposed to outsourcing the offense entirely to an OC who comes in with his own playbook. Sounds like Jonathan Gannon is going to be pretty actively involved in what sort of offense the Arizona Cardinals run. So I found that intriguing. He also, when asked about whether he's going to call the defense, that he's not sure yet. Depends on who the defensive coordinator is. Reports say Vance Joseph has a couple of job interviews lined up. I believe both Philadelphia and Denver, if you believe the reports are out there. So I will say there were a number of assistant coaches who were in attendance at the press conference as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of decisions to be made. But to think that he's already called a lot of the players in the 24 hours or so, 36 hours, with everything else that's gone on and traveling back and forth across the country, um, yeah, you can see just how productive a personality he is. He wasn't informed he was even interviewing for the Cardinals job till after the Super Bowl by Eagles GM Howie Roseman. And he said, immediately, I changed my mindset. And that's the first thing he cited in his mantra of what he wants out of the Cardinals, to be smart, to be explosive, to be violent. The first thing he said was adaptive, Yes. the adaptability. And then he elaborated on that. The full quote. We're going to be adaptable. We're going to be violent. We're going to be explosive. We're going to be smart. And then he added this, don't get it twisted. We're going to win games. But that word adapt was used a lot. And we heard that previously when he was first on board with Philadelphia Eagles and specifically a defensive scheme. I don't believe in scheme. Now, it should be pointed out that the Eagles were a 4-3 defense. Cardinals, under Vance Joseph, a 3-4. Now, do you adapt to what you have and then try to morph into what you want to be? But I do think it's interesting the fact that whether it's defense or offense, maximize the talents of the players you have. And that was brought up with Isaiah Simmons a number of different ways as far as how to utilize Simmons' skill set. But figure out what a player does best and then work them into what you hope to accomplish, and that is ultimately win games on Sundays. Yeah, the Eagles didn't blitz a lot. The Cardinals did. Yes. But you could also contend the Cardinals needed to. It was out of necessity. They didn't have the sort of pass rushers the Eagles had. where <laughs> They had 15 more sacks than any other team in the NFL this year, 70 sacks during the regular season. So I think that's an example of the adaptability, is you're going to have to play your hand the best way you see fit. It was also intriguing to hear that he had some uh, – differences of opinion on the Cardinals roster you know what and I like that and because you don't want the general manager or the head coach to say yes whatever the general manager suggests yes or the head coach no you want that back and forth that disagreement if you will because I think good disagreement leads to better things and I think he comes in with a little more credence right he comes in with a little more street cred in his roster opinions, because he did spend three years as a scout. And, and I think Monty Ossenfort, Dave Sears, are probably more apt to listen to a head coach who once upon a time was a scout and hit the road for three years and, and did all that dirty work in evaluating players as opposed to maybe an assistant coach who had never been in that line of the business. So I, I agree. I mean, healthy disagreement is good. And, and so I think it's going to help them – come to a lot of decisions. And make no mistake, there are a lot of decisions to be made, 30-plus pending free agents. And so, yes, they're going to have to hit the film immediately, which, you know, he's not foreign to. He he was watching the Super Bowl game film in his hotel room that Sunday night, so that that was intriguing uh, to hear. And then to also hear Michael Bidwell say that you haven't seen anything yet in terms of energy. (laughs) 
<laughs> that he's actually subdued for the press conference. That was sort of an intriguing comment as to, okay, what's it going to be like in between the white lines? Now, also, we heard Michael refer to Coach Gannon as JG. I don't know if that is just a owner or front office. Like, Paul, can you and I get away <laughs> with in the hallways JG? Or is it Coach Gannon or Mr. Gannon? I mean, is he that informal? I mean, I, it was it was interesting no. to hear JG. I was like, okay, that's our coach. Not yet. I, I would <laughs> say not yet. No, not, not, not until you meet him face to face. Exactly. Right? Not when he comes in for the first interview here into the studio. Uh, absolutely not. But it was also interesting to hear him cite his dad, who has passed away, and then he was taught both by his father and his coaches from a very young age. You know, it, it's about the team. It's not about you. Um, you know, and he was a standout athlete. He won state titles in more than one sport. Might have been a pro golfer, if not for missing that golf team uh, in high school. Who yeah. knows where he, his career might have been headed. By the way, Jacob, uh, one of our fine members of the media department, just texted me and said that he does prefer JG. Okay. Just to let you know. That's so, good to know. Bird okay. gang out there, if you run into Coach Gannon, it's yeah. not Coach, it's JG. You know, Jacob might already be on, you know, first name <laughs> basis with the new head coach, and, and we're not. But uh, that's, that's the latest on that. And so, look. I think accountability was a big deal. It was cited by Michael Bidwell before they started the search. It was cited by Michael Bidwell after the search. And the reason they decided on Jonathan Gannon, and I'm looking for the quote here where he said, on accountability, his definition was that you have to define what winning is and hold people to that standard. And the ultimate accountability comes in not letting your teammate down. Yes. And, and, and when you hear players and former players talk, Craig, that is the case. That's a best case scenario. If you have that sort of culture where, you know what, you're going to bring your best effort every day because you don't want to let the guy down next to you in the huddle or in the let locker next to you in that meeting room. And so, um, you know, if you can instill that sort of culture and hold everyone to that sort of standard, which I'm going to surmise towards the end of last year when things got sideways, that started to go missing. And you heard some of the team leaders at the end of the year, the J.J. Watts, the Buda Bakers, make reference to that. So, I, to me, I think that's job number one. And it starts with the head coach. I do believe that a team takes on the personality of its head coach. So, those aren't just words when he says we're going to be violent and explosive. That appears to be the personality of Jonathan Gannon. And that team first mentality goes back to when Monty Austinfort was introduced. There are no egos in this building. So already you're high, kind of already hearing that same message between GM and head coach. Yeah, everyone wants to win, but it's team first, not the individual first as far as stats or whatever. Everyone is going to get praised and those accolades are going to come as long as you win, as long as you're on a winning football team. And I mentioned it before, Shane Steichen, when he did the Colts press conference as the offensive coordinator for the Eagles this past year, said the thing he learned first and foremost from Nick Sirianni in a first-time head coach who took over a four-win team, a lot of similarities to the staff that Gannon was just on and the situation they faced in Philadelphia two years ago to where the Arizona Cardinals are right now. And the first thing that Sirianni did was instill that accountability and make it absolutely non-negotiable. And that's what I expect out of Jonathan Gannon. Not only on hearing that and his experiences, but after that press conference, I think there's no question that the accountability, everything will revolve around that. And, and there will be expectations on a daily basis, the same expectations he holds himself to. And so we'll see if that, if that flows through. Um, and you know what? When he talks about, Kyler Murray, the franchise quarterback, and maximizing Kyler Murray. That was the word he used. Uh, guess what? That goes for the franchise quarterback as well. I think he will be held to that same standard. There won't be any exceptions. And so there's a lot of questions as to, okay, who's a good fit on this roster and who isn't because there's a different mentality in town. We've already seen a lot of change already. General manager, head coach, how much change now? The trickle-down as far as players, offense, defense, and special teams. Again, Jonathan Gannon, JG, officially day one on the job, and he hits it running. Don't forget, the scouting combine is in a week and a half. Free agency in one month, and then the draft at the end of April. More coverage of Jonathan Gannon as the Arizona Cardinals' new head coach, on azcardinals.com and of course throughout the days weeks months 
to come before we hit 2023. For Paul Calvisi, I'm Craig Riolu. Appreciate everyone tuning in here, listening to new Arizona Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon. He is the man right now.